Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my strategy on how to complete the Outbreak main easter egg on Solo. And the strategy I'm going to be sharing with you guys here today is actually a pretty safe strategy. Probably the easiest way to do it and the safest way to do it. And uh, on top of that, it's actually not that slow either. In my most recent run, not only was it flawless, but on top of that, it only took slightly above an hour. I think it was like an hour and three minutes, which is pretty fast for the safe strategy out there if you ask me so I think it's a pretty good strategy hopefully it becomes useful for you guys but one quick thing I have to put right here to start this disclaimer is that this is not an Easter egg guide I am NOT telling you how to do the Easter egg it's only explaining the strategy on how to do certain parts of the Easter egg that require strategies so there's steps that I'll completely ignore and never mention and because of that I'm assuming you already know how to do this Easter egg or at least have a guide alongside this one with all that said, let's get into this strategy guide. So before we could actually get in game, we need to first discuss first, what exactly are we trying to accomplish with this strategy? And the first thing and the most important thing is that we are trying to get to the boss fight by round five and be completely set by round five. So this means that we're going to have level three armor, six perks and finally a legendary triple packed gun that's what we are aiming for and i'll be explaining the best possible way to get set as fast as possible but before that a couple more pre-game things and the first thing that i think is probably really important is the gun that i recommend using and i really recommend using this it's the ffar this ffar recently got a buff and it's so good i'll be showing you guys a class setup in the background right now but trust me this thing is so good it has a high High fire rate recently buffed so it has a lot of damage and it also got a buff to the ammo count in both the clip and the stock so it has a ton of ammo just all the time it's just everything you want in a gun the only negative is that it has a lot of recoil but that's something that you could just kind of get used to and use attachments to counteract anyway so I think the FFAR just melts a boss and you guys will see when we get to the boss fight why it's just so good but finally the last thing you need before you start the game is that I recommend using ring of fire on your ffar class because that's what you're going to be using for the first four rounds because it makes so many things just so much easier to kill bosses during certain parts and stuff like that so i recommend using that but what you're going to be using for the boss fight is going to be frenzy guard and you're going to swap to that during the easter egg but i'll tell you exactly when that is later in this video but with all that said let's actually get into the in-game stuff first i want to mention some passive stuff that you should just be doing throughout the entire time and the first thing is that if you see molotovs pick them up they will be useful in the boss fight i'll explain why later same thing with streaks if you could find a war machine or any streak but especially a war machine it'll make your run so easy trust me they'll make the boss fight so easy again i'll explain why later the other passive thing that you want to be doing is do the free perks easter eggs every time you see them and this is actually why i recommend using ring of fire because you can just breeze past these every time but just do the free perky strike every time you see it because it'll save you a ton of money because you don't have to buy the perks and then more than that it'll be giving you money when you complete that side objective and you can use that money to pack a bunch of gun all the way to triple pack a punch you could also do the gold box side easter egg and also the order if you want but honestly i don't find them necessary except the gold box early game but i don't really do them later in the rounds because i just have enough points at that point but if you want to be safe especially if it's one of your early runs then you could do them but you have to keep in mind that that also gives you a chance to go down and if you go down you'll lose you might lose a ton of perks and you'll be set back a lot which is always not a great thing so just try to balance it out for whichever way you are playing it just try to decide on your own game if you need points or not that's how you should decide if you need to do these other side objectives but now let's get into the important important things and the first thing i should mention are the easter egg steps because there's only two easter egg steps before you head to ruka and then go under ruka and what you want to do is do those easter egg steps as early as possible because you want to beat this easter egg as early as possible so right on round three do the radio easter egg right on round four do the monkey or projector easter egg step like do those steps so you could do the easter egg on round five just do them on those rounds because you don't want to be doing the boss fight on round six or higher it's just not fun but the next thing that is also really really important is actually getting your ffar to legendary rarity because 
this is something that you may mess up if you aren't doing correctly, but it's easy to do once you know how to do it. The biggest piece of information I could give you on doing this correctly is to upgrade your gun's rarity before you upgrade your armor. So what this means is that don't upgrade your armor to level two until your FFAR is blue. And don't upgrade your armor to level three until your FFAR is purple. Just don't do it. It's just going to throw off the timing and you may not be able to get your gun to legendary or gold rarity if you do it too early. But this brings us to how we actually get our gun to gold rarity because if you just complete all the objectives and just upgrade your gun normally, you won't actually have enough blue salvage to get your gun to gold. So how you actually want to do this is use the, the orange crystal or crystal rush side objective, which as you probably know, after completing it, it will give you a wrench that will increase the rarity of your gun up to one. And this is why you want to get your gun to purple rarity as fast as possible because you aren't guaranteed to get this orange crystal side objective every single round. So you want to get it as fast as possible so you have more chances of actually getting this side objective. And if you do this as best as possible, the earliest you could actually get your gun gold is by round three. And this is something you have to remember that on round three, if you do see a crystal rush, complete the main objective first because after you complete the main objective on round three you most likely will have 500 blue salvage and using that 500 blue salvage you can increase your gun to purple so if you do see it on round three don't use it until you make your gun purple but if it didn't spawn on round three that's fine because you still have a chance for the crystal to spawn on round four and five there after that that could get your gun to the gold rarity you need it to but by the end of round four you should be probably completely set you'll have level three armor probably six perks if you got all of them free if not just buy the rest of your perks have a triple packed legendary gun the last thing you need to do is just add the brain rot ammo mod to your ffar trust me it's super good and you're going to want to have it on one thing i should quickly address is that there is no mention of a secondary and that's because it's not needed it just ain't even if you have leftover money i don't recommend pack a bunchy or even double pack a bunchy a secondary because you're better off keeping that money in case you go down and you using that money to buy your perks back. This should take you to round five where you're entering into Ruka. And once you spawn into Ruka, change your field upgrades from Ring of Fire to Frenzy Guard because that's going to be necessary for the boss fight. And don't worry about it. Yes, it will be charged by the time you get to the boss fight. So once you head under Ruka, the first thing you should do is just spawn in all of the mimics and then kill them all because this is not only necessary because all the mimics are in the way and you're going to have to run through this area but on top of that it's also very helpful because it will charge your frenzy guard all the way by doing this just be careful not to get grabbed so don't shoot at them for too long because if you do get grabbed you can get stuck in a cycle of just keep, keep getting grabbed over and over and over again until you die and it's very sad when it happens so just be careful while you're doing that but then after that, I can't give you too much hints on how to do these three ICBM key steps because there's not much I could tell you how to do these things. They're just something you have to do yourself. The only general tip I could give you guys is that if you ever need the zombie horde away from you, just start training in a place that you don't need the zombies. And once you collected a decent train, go ahead and take off running to the area you need to do something at. And then from there, you won't have zombies on you at least for a little bit. But besides that, there's not that many uh, little hints I could give to you. Now at this point, you should be just at the point while you're heading up the stairs to go enter the boss fight. And what you need to do quickly before you head up those stairs is if you have the extra extra green salvage go buy some monkeys at least one if you can because that will be useful and I'll explain why in the boss fight for a reason that you may not be expecting it also another thing that you could buy off this table if you have the blue salvage is the war machine as I mentioned it's incredibly useful if you didn't find it around the floor definitely buy it here if you have the salvage because it's very useful and then also repair your armor if you can because you want to have full full armor when you head up there if you can. And now finally for the boss fight and really everything I've been telling you about up until this point, I'm going to now explain why they're all so good for the boss fight. First, let's talk about the FFAR. 
The FFAR, as I mentioned, has a ton of ammo, has fire rate, and a ton of damage. For example, when you shoot the boss zombie in the chest, it deals nearly a thousand. I think it's 998 damage, which is a ton of damage to the body. But if you hit the head, and this is something that people don't know of, then it's a huge tip. Try to shoot the head of the boss zombie because there is a headshot multiplier because the difference between the FFAR body shot and a headshot is 200 and some. And the total damage that you will deal to the head is going to be 1250 I think and that's a decent multiplier that you could do so if you can try to shoot the head as much as possible also don't be afraid to shoot the boss from range because if you guys copied my loadout I had for the FFAR we put on the takedown barrel and that increases the range by 150 so you could shoot it from nearly anywhere and not have any damage drop off at all because of the barrel and that's really good actually another important thing while you are shooting the boss zombie is to keep moving even while you're shooting and aiming downside just keep moving because you don't want to stand in place like a statue and get swarmed by zombies or, or get grabbed by a mimic so just keep moving while you are shooting because you just don't want to die now for the boss's attacks they're really not anything to worry about too much just don't stand in the area where the boss is just about to shock try not to get trapped in the purple areas that the boss zombie could spawn in because those are probably going to be the only attack that ever kills you from the boss but now to get into dealing with everything else so this is going to be dealing with the dogs zombies and the mini bosses that spawn while you're just trying to kill that guy this is where everything comes into play so as i mentioned you want to use frenzy guard because frenzy guard will repair your armor so whenever your armor breaks you pop your frenzy guard now this is kind of risky if you don't want to risk it that's completely fine you could pop your frenzy guard the second your armor breaks but if you want to have it in the most efficient possible way try to time your frenzy guard when your armor breaks alongside when the boss zombie has the orbs pop out of it because it'll make it much easier to shoot the boss zombies orbs and then on top of that it'll also repair your armor again a little risky so if you guys don't want to do it that's fine but it does make it easier now this brings us to all the stuff i told you to bring into the boss fight and why it's so important and these things of course being brain rot molotovs monkey bombs and the war machine now three of these things and also half a brain rot but we'll get into brain rot after these but the monkey bomb the molotov and the war machine are all brought into this boss fight for one sole reason and what this is 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 to recharge your frenzy guard after you use it so once you use a frenzy guard for the first time i recommend just casually throw in a couple molotovs into the horde of zombies every now and then until those run out once you run out of molotovs you can throw a monkey that'll kill a lot of zombies and then when it still needs a little bit more charge then you can start using your war machine to kill a lot more zombies and hopefully after that frenzy guard will be fully charged if not this is where brain rock comes into play but again brain rock has double uses you could first use it just to get rid of the mini bosses because you could just turn them and that's a huge use for them but secondly is to finish off charging your frenzy guard and after you do all this you should probably have a second activation of frenzy guard ready to use and if you do get two activations of a frenzy guard and you are careful with your time the boss fights on easy mode like let's be honest it's going to be on easy mode if you have two activations of that and if you follow all these tips it should make the boss fight a lot easier for you and you should finally get yourself this ending that you've been trying to get on solo but that's about it for this video hopefully this was useful to you guys in some way shape and form if it was i would appreciate it if you guys like subscribe bell share and all that great stuff but i guess i'm gonna head out and i'll catch you guys in the next stream video or whatever it may be and uh laters guys